Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. You're going to love today's video because I'm going to go over what you're going to need for a full golf simulation setup. Now, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel right now. It'll really allow my channel to grow and allow me to continue bringing videos just like this to YouTube. Now, I really wanted to talk about this. I've done videos like this before but not in this setting. I did it down in the garage and I just feel like there's a lot of uh, things that I maybe have left out in the past that I wanted to talk about. And then also things have really changed for me during the last 18 months of my golf simulator voyage. Now, when I first started, I basically just hit into a net and used my Garmin R10 to track the shots with the Garmin software and used a monitor mounted onto a stand to track my shots. And this is what that looked like initially. As you can see, I used a Spornia golf net, which is an absolutely incredible golf net. Um, the mat was just a basic mat uh, and then a monitor using the Garmin R10 and that was fine. But really what I found out was is that if I didn't have a target that I was aiming at, like when I took lessons uh, using TrackMan with a full golf simulator, it just was not the same hitting into a net. And really, I think it was messing me up, quite frankly. So this is what my sim looks like now. And I have made changes since then, but really, basically, that's it. So I wasted some money on the way, and I wanted to talk about that too. I wasted money on a, on a mat. Uh, I wasted money on a projector. You know, it's just basically, you know, paperweights at this point. Now, I didn't waste a ton of money, but I did waste some money. And I did waste some time trying to make an older PC work better by upgrading the memory and stuff like that. And really, it didn't matter. So I want to talk about all of that. So let's start with the enclosure. So if you're going to build a full golf simulator with an enclosure, or if you're going to build something that has at least a safe uh, screen to hit into. You know, I'm not talking about hitting into a bed sheet and hitting up against the wall and the ball comes back at you 140 miles an hour. You know, it's really important that you start out with a safe enclosure. So I actually bought mine through Amazon, through the indoor golf shop, and it's a eight and a half by eight and a half foot one by one ratio screen with a premium screen. It really is excellent. Uh, I don't recommend that you buy a one by one ratio screen. In other words, a perfectly square screen because it's really difficult to project that image with a lot of your golf simulator projectors. It is certainly possible and it also may cause you problems with different software that you buy and may not be able to project that type of image. It's better to get a screen that can project a four by three or 16 by nine image because it just will be better for you. Now, if you don't have the room, the one by one will work, but it is going to be more difficult in your journey. So I talked about the safety. That's really, really, really important. The way I have mine set up is I removed like half the bungees from my enclosure because that helped to deaden it when the ball hit it, but it still keeps it super tight on there. It makes it look very realistic. There's, I've seen a lot of golf sims where it's just like, there's all these little pleats on the screen and it just looks terrible in my opinion. And I think you wanna make it as quality as you possibly can. Maybe you have more money than I do. Maybe you have less money than I do to build it. And there are different ways that you can do it. You can spend less money on, a, on your projector if you can project the image, like I had said, in a non one by one ratio, like a four by three or six by nine or 16 by nine, which is just a lot easier. And there's a lot more options with projectors. So the screen is gonna be super important. I have a premium screen and I've hit tens of thousands of balls into it, upwards of 155 miles an hour or more, even 175 miles an hour. And there's no damage on the screen and it looks like it's brand new. So again, going back to the safety of it, that also includes your landing material. You know, when you hit the ball, that ball is going to come down and you can't just have it, you know, bounce onto a hard floor. My golf simulator is in the garage, so I have to set it up. I pull my vehicle out, I set it up, it takes me five minutes. It's pretty awesome. 
but you may have it in a barn, you may have it in your basement if you have high enough ceilings or whatnot. But wherever it is that you're gonna be setting up, wherever your area is, you wanna make sure that it's safe in every way. That's super important for, the, for you and for the people that come and play. So let's move on from that. Just make sure it's safe when you build it. And you know, I paid $1,399 for my enclosure. For me, 1,400 bucks, plus another couple hundred dollars in the uh, pipes to build the structure for it, which didn't come with, uh, was a very inexpensive price for me. I actually, in the beginning, uh, to raise money, so my wife didn't yell at me, I sold some of my guitar gear, a couple thousand dollars worth, and, and it paid for most of my golf sim build initially. So let's talk about launch monitors. So I've been using the Garmin R10 from the beginning for the last 18 months or so, and it's done just fine. Um, initially, I used the Garmin Golf app and Home T Hero, and then I graduated to Awesome Golf, and then I graduated to GS Pro. And GS Pro can be used with the Garmin with a third-party connector because they're open API. Now, I recently got SkyTrack, so I'm gonna be doing at least 10 to 15 videos over the next three months or so on that. Um, but I wanna get more acclimated with it. Uh, SkyTrack has a new proprietary uh, golf simulator software built right into the application that has a subscription for, and it also includes uh, some E6 courses, 10 of them. So we'll be able to talk about that here over the next couple of months, and I'm really excited about SkyTrack. But there's just so many options, and most people are spending for home golf simulators basically about $500 to $4,000, and you know you can pay more for the overhead mounted one stuff like that inevitably i would love to have that but it's just a lot more expensive and those are you know seven to twenty five thousand dollars and i'm just not really willing to pay that you know whereas you know like skytrack is around three thousand dollars or like flight scope uh with the pro package is around three thousand dollars i mean you can get it for around 1900 bucks if you just want to use it for golf simulation and not game improvement but you know some of the more popular launch monitors are going to be like the Uniker uh, line of uh, launch monitors or Bushnell, Foresight, Trackman, uh, Garmin, Rapsodo, uh, you know, the SkyTrack, which we already talked about. And it all depends on what you want to use for software and what your budget is. Okay. Don't waste your money on something you know you're not going to want to use. Do your research. Watch my videos. Watch other videos on YouTube to find out what you want to use. GS Pro is very commonly used. There's a lot of different launch monitors you can use with it. But now I'm going to be delving into the SkyTrack world and some of the options there as well. Probably one of the first things you're going to want to think about is that Golf Sim software. Uh, is there a lifetime license, you know, like uh, Awesome Golf? but there's not a lot of golf courses on that to play. Now they're gonna be adding some this year, hopefully they're talking about doing that, but you know, like GS Pro has over 700 golf courses. Uh, it's, it's pretty incredible for $250 a year, but like you can buy the uh, flight scope for, you know, with a pro package for three grand and you don't have to pay for a subscription there. Now you're gonna to have to maybe potentially pay for a subscription for whatever software you decide to use uh, GS Pro is integrated with that, but you can also buy like the Golf Club 2019. It's around $1,000 or something like that for a lifetime subscription, really nice as well. There's a lot of things that you may not think about that are included in this Golf Sim build. And that is like, you know, the ambient sounds that are in the golf courses, you know, like when the ball hits the green or goes into the cup, hits the pin, goes into water, goes into sand, uh, you know, when the ball takes off, birds, wind, all these different things. So the sound through a projector sucks, plain and simple. It's just not good enough. So I bought a speaker at Walmart, like a party speaker for like $150. You have to think about that. And then you gotta think, okay, I gotta get an audio cable. So I bought an audio cable. It's like a 30 foot audio cable. It was like $10 on Amazon. I'm gonna put a lot of these links in the bottom underneath this video. So you can see some of the things that I've purchased. And then, you know, uh, going back to the enclosure, I talked about landing material. What I use is some golf mats, some inexpensive golf mats. They were like, you know, $85 a piece or something like that. And I have four of those. 
so that when the ball hits the screen, drops down, hits the mat, and softens that blow, so it'll just kind of roll back to me instead of come back at me like a rocket. And then you have to think about also, you know, in the mat, I initially had a low quality mat that was like a hundred bucks, and then I ended up buying the Country Club Elite mat, which is a $600 mat. It's just a lot more realistic, uh, and uh, you know, it'll penalize you if you hit behind the ball. Whereas like a thinner mat that, that doesn't have that ability to do that, you may hit behind the ball and it bounces and still hits the ball and you think you got a good golf shot. And then, but you're gonna learn how to use your data within the golf simulator system from the launch monitor, from, the algo, from, the, from your launch monitor, from the algorithm, from the launch monitor, from the algorithm, from your golf sim software. It's gonna tell you, and you, you need to learn how to use that data, whether it be smash factor or attack angle, or you know your spin rate or your club speed, all these different things. You know, I was swinging over the top. So that swing angle is going to be super important for somebody when I first started to improve your swing. And also with that mat, I wanted to talk about is golf tees. So initially I was using those golf tees like you find in the ranges on the mats that pull up through the mat. And that's exactly what they do. You know, if you hit it for a couple thousands of times, what happens is that just pulls right up through the rubber on the mat and destroys your mat. It leaves a gaping hole there. And I've had, I had to fix that like a dozen times and I just gave up. So I bought a better mat and I started using these golf tees and I'll put the link on there. Uh, they're like $10 for a dozen of them or there's more than that, I think, like 20 of them. And uh, you, know, you can use it for driver or you can use it for your irons if you don't want to hit off the mat for a just nice low tee. And then also, you know, even if you have a mat like me that can accept a regular tee, I don't want to use a wooden tee because there's going to be shreds all over the place. And if you keep putting it back in the same spot, it's going to wear the mat out. So I use these plastic tees or you can use burr tees as well. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, but those are awesome as well. You would not believe how long these tees last. So I'll put that in there as well. You got to think about aesthetics that surrounds your golf simulator. Uh, you, you know, whether it be curtains like I do, I just pull the curtains closed. I've changed those a couple of times or, you know, just, you know, making it look nice for you and your friends. And then also your projector. This is a big one. So with me, I've got the one by one ratio. So I wanted to get a upgraded projector. And again, like I said, I wasted money in the beginning. You know, I spent a couple hundred dollars on a projector and really it was a piece of crap. So I bought a good projector from BenQ for $1,800. And it does have a one by one ratio uh, built right into it for the setting. And once I set that, I was able to dial it in within 10 minutes. And it perfectly fills up my screen with GS Pro and probably, I don't know, 95% of my screen with uh, Awesome Golf. So it, it works tremendously and there's like a golf setting to you know, bring out the vivid colors and all that. And it's just a tremendous projector. You also wanna think about if you're not kind of a dark room, if you're gonna have a more well-lit room or you just want more light, you're gonna have to have a higher lumen projector. Don't, you know, buy a 2000 lumen projector because you're probably gonna hate it. Uh, so mine is well over three, I think it's like 3,500 lumens or 3,800 lumens, something like that. And most people are using at least 2,500 lumens for a projector. Uh, you can get 4K projectors. I don't have one currently, I'd love to have one. But then you also have to delve into uh, a better computer for that with a better GPU to run 4K graphics. And we're gonna talk about that later. Cause that's probably my biggest stupid mistake that I've made in my golf sim journey. You know, I've wasted the most money on that. So with the projector, get the best quality projector that you can afford for your golf sim. Don't waste money on it like I did. So let's talk about golf sim control boxes. I have a golf sim control box that was originally provided to me last year by Rocks or Golf. And I did a video on it and I'll put that link in the video at the end here so you can watch that as well. And Rocks or makes tremendous uh, products. Uh, they actually even started making irons. 
uh, on their website. So check that out. But the Golf Sim control box will help you to not have to walk back and forth. I keep mine on a stand, or you can just keep it on the floor. And use you know, flip your golf club upside down, and use the um, you know the grip part of the golf club to change your you know aiming points and you know all these different things with the control box. All your different settings that you're going to use on the control board, you can program those into the control box, or it may even be pre-set up for like for me it was pre-set up for GS Pro. I have the GSP edition. So rather than walk back and forth and back and forth to your computer to change all the settings, you can do it right there uh, from your control box. And then you gotta think about other things too, like getting surge protectors for your PC or whatever you're gonna be plugging in in that area. Ambient lighting. I always recommend having your ambient lighting for your enclosure to be above the enclosure because that way the light doesn't ruin the image on the screen and ruin the immersiveness of your golf simulator, okay? Uh, heating and cooling, so if it's in a garage, uh, I have a heat pump that I can use uh, for, you know, if it's like 30 degrees to 45 degrees outside, I'll use the heat pump, and then I have a kerosene heater for indoor kerosene heater that I can use. Uh, sometimes with the uh, Doppler radar, launch monitors, you know, things like the Garmin, you can get radar interference with a fan, you know, a heater or a fan or something like that, or even a projector, so you have to be really careful. So I ended up buying that uh, kerosene heater, which does a great job. It's an indoor kerosene heater, very important. Use indoor 1K kerosene if you're gonna do that. So there's things you gotta think about. If you're gonna do it in the garage, I have a you know finished garage, but it still needs to be heated in the wintertime and in the summertime, I need AC. Uh, so those are some of the things I want you to think about before you start building your golf simulator because it just starts adding up very quickly if you make a mistake. So storage as well, whether it be like a golf ball tray, like uh, there's a picture here. There's I bought a rubberized golf tray just to organize everything. I basically use only one or two balls during a golf sim uh, session. So this is what I really wanted to talk about more than anything is your PC or whatever you're gonna use to project that image to your projector and then to your screen. Most of the higher end software, you're gonna to wanna to use a PC. Now there are options to use an iPad for some softwares. There's not as many options for Android tablets or Android phones. You may be able to even use like an iPhone or something like that, but to have a professional golf simulator, most of the time, you're going to use a PC. And you're gonna wanna have a PC that has a good GPU. That is the true speed of that thing. And at least 16 gig of memory. And when I first started, I bought a gaming laptop. And I spent $1,000 on it. And then I spent a couple hundred dollars upgrading the memory and a couple other things just to try to make it work better with GS Pro. And it just never would work. So I wasted about 13 or $1,400 on that laptop. Now I still have a great laptop, but it was a complete waste of money because it couldn't run the graphics at the ultra setting or even at a high graphic setting for GS Pro. It utilizes a lot of system resources because it's great software and it's realistic software, like a lot of the softwares out there. Don't waste your money on a piece of crap PC or try to, you know, make a really old PC with a, you know, old GPU that has no chance of making it work. You're just going to be wasting your time. So my computer downstairs uh, for the golf sim, it has a high-end GPU. It has 64 gig of memory. You know, it really has a great processor, the CPU as well. So look at what your manufacturer for your software recommends and follow their lead and make sure you have their minimums to run their software. I'm not gonna go into my, you know, settings or my, I guess my specs for my computer because it just never ends. Um, there are so many different options out there and just follow 
the spec recommendations for whatever software you want to use. Don't waste your time trying to make something that is not in, in their specs. Don't expect that something that's not within their specs to work very well because I tried it and it just didn't work for me. Get yourself a good PC if you're going to be running golf simulator software that is required to be ran on a PC. Most of the golf sim softwares do not work on the Apple products. It's all pretty much PC only. So to compartmentalize everything that I talked about, these are the things you want to talk about. Your enclosure and a quality screen, safe launch monitor, golf sim software, a speaker potentially, a golf mat, your ball tray or organizer, landing material for your ball, your projector, golf tees, an audio cable, an HDMI cable, any aesthetics for your room, uh, golf sim control box, if you choose to use one, which I highly recommend, uh, your golf sim PC or any device or tablet or a phone, whatever you plan on using, storage, ambient lighting, surge protectors, and then heating or cooling in that area. Well, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's content. Please like the video if you enjoyed today's content and share with any of your friends that may be interested in building a golf simulator in whatever area or space that they may have. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.